Hi everyone, lesson seven on measures of center. Where is the data value wise? So let's say that we have a class with 100 students. They take a test and I have now a list of their 100 test scores. How do you find a central or representative score? We're looking for a measure of center. And we're going to look at four measures of center. So for example, if I gave you five minutes to find a measure of center and I give you a scientific calculator, what would you do? Number two, what if I gave you five minutes but I didn't allow you to use a calculator or a computer? How would you find a central measure? Number three, what if I gave you 20 seconds? You scan over these 100 scores, how would you find a measure of center? Number four, how about 10 seconds? <laughs> four measures of center. What are four things you could do to find a central or representative value? All right, let's say that I allow you five minutes and a scientific calculator. What would a lot of people do? They would take the average or mean of these 100 test scores. How would you find the average of 100 test scores or 100 numbers? Add up all 100 numbers and divide by 100. So let's do that. Uh, or instead of that, let's, <laughs> let's consider five test scores. 100 test scores might be too much. Okay, um, I, I'll, I'll go over Excel later, but let's do it by hand first. Example one, five test scores. The five students in a class take a test. Their scores in points are as follows. 80 points, 76 points, 100 points, 83 points, 100 points. How do we find a single number that tells us how well the class did? So after I've graded the test, the class of students ask me, so how well did we do? And they want me to give them one number, a central or representative score. So let's look at four possibilities of measuring the center for a quantitative data set. All right. Well, again, the natural choice would be the arithmetic mean or average, assuming you have a calculator or Excel or some software. Now, there are other measures called means, but the arithmetic mean, or simply the mean or the average, is by far the most common. Uh, for example, in a geometric mean, you multiply the numbers and take the nth root. All right, so in our example one, the mean of the five test scores would be obtained by taking the sum of the five test scores, the five data values, adding them all up. There are two 100s, so they do count twice, all right? And you divide that by the number of values, five. There are five test scores. If you do that, you should get well, the sum of the scores was 439 points. Divide by five, and you get exactly 87.8 points. Technically, you should put a unit there, 87.8 points. So that's our measure of center if you use the arithmetic mean or average, 87.8 points, which would seem reasonable. An overall score for the class. Now, by the way, if you were working this out on a calculator, would this be appropriate? Think about it. Would this be appropriate? If you go 80 plus 76 plus 100 plus 83 plus 100 divided by 5 equals, would that work to find a measure of center, to find the mean? Well, the answer is no. I say here, what would be wrong with doing this? <laughs> well, here's the problem. If you were to enter this into your calculator straight up, what would be the first operation your calculator would do? By the order of operations, oops, as I would say, by the order of operations, the first operation your calculator would perform would be the division. 100 divided by five is 20, and then it would add the 20 to these four other numbers. That's not what you want, right? You want the sum of these divided by five. So you have to group the numerator somehow. 
Warning, group the numerator. You must group or compute or process the numerator before dividing by five. And you can do this by using maybe parentheses uh, on your calculator around the numerator, or you can work the sum out on your calculator, then press enter or something like that before dividing by five. But remember, you have to process the sum, process the numerator before dividing by five, and then press equals or enter. Just doing this won't work. A few notes on rounding. Now here, uh, the average was exactly 87.8 points, but even if we had gotten something like 87.7999 or something, we still would have wanted to round off to 87.8 points. Uh, the rule is that we want to round off to one more decimal point relative to the original data values. The original data values were given in integers, zero decimal places, right? We had zero decimal places in the original data, so we go to one decimal place when reporting a mean. Notes on rounding. For now, we will typically round off our final answers to one more decimal place than the number of decimal places provided in the given data. Since the given data were data values in integers, rounded off to zero decimal places, we round off our final answers to one decimal place, to the nearest 10. Avoid rounding intermediate results. So if you're doing calculations, you don't want to round off too much in the middle. Uh, let's say you wanted your final result accurate to one decimal place. Well, if, if you have things rounded off in the middle, you don't want to round off too much. Uh, so I, actually, if you wanted your final answer rounded off to five decimal places, you don't want to round off in the middle to one decimal place. That's not enough. <laughs> and, and the memory button on your calculator can help. Always read the instructions on exams. They'll take precedence. Later on, we're going to discuss trimmed means, uh, and you're going to see a, the purpose for that. Now, before we go on to other measures, let's talk about this idea of the average or the arithmetic mean. Let's go to Excel. Right? So here we have the five test scores in any order. It doesn't matter. Remember, the 100 is counted twice because we had two students getting hundreds. To find the mean, we type equals, actually average. The word mean won't work. The command is average. Equals average. And then you can either type in B2 colon B6 uh, for the first and last entries we want in the column, or you could just move your mouse over these entries and it'll automatically say, hey, you want the ones from B2 through B6, those cells, and parenthesis, and you get the average, which you can see is 87.8 points, you should put the unit, and that's the mean, 87.8 points. Let's be more ambitious. Remember the presence data. Over here, the presence data. What's the average of these 45, President's agents, all right? Let's do it, equals average, it's from B2 to B46. Ah, it's exactly 55 years. So 55 years is the average, the arithmetic mean of the ages of the 45 presidents. Uh, Trump is at 46 because uh, row number one consists of headers. Keep that in mind when you're using Excel. Row number one also often consists of headers. Okay, so we wanted from B2 to B46. The average was 55 years, which makes sense. It's good to look over the data points and uh, see if your average makes sense. Now, if you had gotten 550 years, you probably made a mistake. Like if I had done 700 for Trump, uh, the mean is uh, gonna be a fair bit off. <laughs> All right, next time we'll look at other ways of measuring the center for a data set. So what's another way of figuring out the center of a data set, right? A hundred test scores. What's, what are some other central or representative values we could use?